Um, so we, we just read this section from our Torah, which is one of my favorite stories in, in the Torah. Um, so I'm grateful for an opportunity this morning to share um, a teaching with you. So get started in just a moment. This week in our Parsha, Parshat Pinchas, as our ancestors journey through the wilderness, we meet five sisters known as the daughters of Tzlofechad, Noah, Tirza, Chogla, Milka, and Machla. Their father has died, leaving no sons to inherit his allotted portion of the land on the other side of the Jordan River. And so the sisters approach Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the leaders of the tribes, vying for their rightful place as beneficiaries of their father's inheritance. The story begins, Vatikravna benot Tzlofechad. And the daughters of Tzlofechad stepped forward, Vatikravna, they drew near. Vatikravna benot Tzlofechad, they came close to each other, to God, Vatikravna, and this word has a root in common with the word korban, the term for sacred offering. And the sisters bring their sacred offering in the form of a question. They stand before Moshe, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the entire community. And they ask with holy chutzpah, Lama yigara shem avinu mitoch mishpachto ki ein lo banim. Why should our father's name be lost to his clan just because he had no sons? And they continue. They say, give us a holding among our father's kinsmen. Their question gives Moshe pause. And we've been seeing a lot of action from our own Supreme Court right now. And in this story, Moshe bumps the case up to the Supreme Supreme Court. The Midrash in Sifrei Bamidbar gives us insight into the process of the sisters and the argument on which they base their case, that they bring to Moshe, that, that they bring to the whole community, right? The rabbis of the, the Midrash teach in Sifrei Bamidbar, when the daughters of Tzlofechad heard that the land of Israel was being divided up among the tribes, but land was only being apportioned to the males and not to the females, they came together to consult with one another, to discern how to make their claim. And they said, the compassion of God is not like the compassion of humans. Humans in power favor males over females, but the one who spoke and brought the world into being is not like that. Rather, when it comes to matters of gender, God shows compassion to every living being. As it says in Sefer Tehillim in Psalm 145, what we know as Ashrei, Tov Adonai lakol v'rachamav al kol ma'asav. Adonai is good to all. God's mercy is upon all God's works. So the sisters understand that the compassion of God is unconditional and unlimited, that it's not divvied up based on difference or apportioned according to status. God's mercy, God's loving kindness is unending. And on this, Noah, Milka, Chogla, Machla, and Tirza build their case. Indeed, God rules that the claim of the women is just. 
and the law is adjusted. The daughters of Tzlofechad may inherit their father's land, and the system will evolve for others like them. Hang on one second. Um, right, so God rules that their claim is just, the law is adjusted, the system evolves within the Torah. It's a very powerful, powerful story. So we see the way the sisters bend the arc of their moral universe towards justice, and there's still a long way to go. For unlike the complete compassion of God, the compassion of human beings is bound by bias, right? The law will be that if a man dies without a son, his daughters may inherit land. But if he has no daughters, the land will go next to brothers and uncles and, and male kinsmen. This year, as I read this story, I'm wondering what would it look like if our laws, Jewish and civil, were guided by the principle that each human being is equally deserving of God's love and compassion. If our institutions and leaders wielded their power to organize society around this truth? How might we move things closer to this vision of the world as it could be? And what can we do, each of us as citizens and as stakeholders in the fate of our society, as stakeholders in the fate of one another? So to answer this question, we're gonna to turn to a modern midrash on our story. A few years ago, a wonderful book was published in Israel called Dear Shuni a collection of contemporary midrash written by women. In this compilation, the writer Rivka Lovitz notices that the five women of our Parsha are at first referred to as Benot Tzlofechad, as the daughters of Tzlofechad. And then at the end of this verse, Numbers chapter seven, 27, verse one, at the end of the verse, they're identified by name, Machla, Noah, Chogla, Milka, and Tirza. And Rivka Lovitz asks, why in the beginning are they called Benot Tzlofechad, the daughters of Tzlofechad, and only later are they each mentioned by name? And she reads their father's name, Tzlofechad, as two words, the Hebrew word Tzel, which means shadow, and the word Pachad, which means fear. She suggests that in the beginning they are called the daughters of Tzlofechad because of the Tzel, of the shadow, and the pachad, the fear. The daughters are stuck in the shadow of their father and they're afraid to go in front of the assembly. And so what do they do in the midst of the shadow and of the fear? Vatikravna, they draw close. They draw close to one another. And as they come together, they find courage and confidence. Only when Machla, Noah, Chogla, Milka, and Tirza stand together are they able to emerge from the shadow of fear, to be called by their own unique names, to be seen in their fullness, to speak their truth. As they gather together, I imagine that each one is reminded by her sisters that she too is created in the image of God that she too is seen and known and loved, that she too is worthy of dignity, compassion, and life, that she too has a place in the promised land. When we are held by this truth that God loves each one of us unconditionally, when we are reminded that each one of us is seen, known, and loved, that each one of us is deserving of dignity and worthy of compassion and life. We receive permission to come close to others. And we begin to see the fullness of the humanity of others. When we stand arm in arm with others, we channel the courage to ask questions, the courage to build power and the courage to share power the courage to shift systems, the courage to turn things around. In these times in our country, we are more distanced and more divided than ever. 
This is a dangerous combination. Too often, our leaders seek to score easy points by stoking fear of our neighbors who are different from us. And our Torah reminds us that there's another way. Our Torah reminds us how the daughters of Tzlofechad came close. Vatikravna benot Tzlofechad. And so we pray, Elohei Rachamim, God of unconditional compassion, help us to find the courage to come close, to hear each other's stories with compassion, to remember that there is a place for each one of us in the promised land. Yai nai 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 nai